Welcome to the Sean Trey Show. I have a really interesting guest with me today. Now, would you like to tell people who you are and what you do? Hi, my name is Tolga Ancholu. Uh, I'm a guitarist, uh, guitar professor uh, at Istanbul Technical University. Uh, That's awesome. Designer of three guitars, uh, adjustable microtonal guitar, Lego microtonal guitar, and automatic microtonal guitar. Uh, and I live in Istanbul. That's awesome. And it, it, I was one of the things that drew me to your page was the microtonal guitars. Now, talk to me. What what is a microtonal guitar? Uh, you know, there's a long history of microtonal guitars, uh, which I researched dur during my master's and PhD. So, a microtonal guitar, we can define it like any guitar that you mm -hmm. can also play the microtones in addition yes. to the semitones that are already available on the standard guitars. Uh, mm -hmm. In detail, uh, we are using a tuning system called 12-tone uh, equal temperament. In this yes. tuning system, in one octave, uh, we have 12 semitones. So these, these yes. are the keys of the piano. And these are the uh, frets of the regular guitar. On the microtonal yes. guitars, you have the microtones, which are uh, pitches less than a semitone. So any, any tone less than a semitone. So any in-between tone uh, is a microtone. So, you know, uh, that's why I said you can play the semitones, but you can also play mm -hmm. these in-between tones. That's awesome. And, and this is this is something that one of my um, I had a, a gentleman who came on to the, the podcast and he was talking about this because when he was working with he was trying to design uh, um, a recording software for people that were trying to, to create music because the standard uh, system doesn't work for for cultures that have music that operates outside of that tonal system like like in traditional in vietnam where i live they have uh, music that also has different tones than the the you know the, the system that is is kind of the standard in the west and so <clears throat> there is a type of guitar here there's this 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 gentleman who makes these guitars that are a scalloped neck and so that the the people can achieve the same uh, phenomenon simply by the depth that they are pressing the uh the 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 string so you know and and in vietnamese because vietnamese is a tonal language the, you know and like there's like all these fluctuations in the vocal because if i say toi mun đi toi yeah toi mun đi it's like there's different tones for the language and that has to come in when they sing so it's it's an interesting thing and in 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 the traditional system in turkey how many tones were there traditionally in the music system uh, in music theory uh, you know <laughs> it's defined as a division of the whole tone into nine pieces yeah. so you know uh, okay. normally we divide the whole tone into two parts two semitones uh, yeah. in turkish uh, makam music theory it's nine, but this is also still not that correct because uh, mm. in practice you have more. Uh, and, you know, it's so hard to have uh, to theorize microtonal music because, you know, these you have movable pitches. So these uh, mm -hmm. movable uh, degrees of the scale keeps changing uh, depending on the melodies. Mm -hmm. So that's why... Um, but in theory, we can say it's a division of nine, uh, uh, the whole tone. But And uh, mm. to add into your um, uh, previous scalloped frets, uh, I also, yeah. uh, whenever I give lectures about my microtonal guitar, uh, I uh, in the history of microtonal guitar parts, I talk about Vietnamese music and scalloped fretboard because uh, I watched some uh, examples and they were awesome. And also yeah. uh, some Indian music is also uh, played on the scalloped fretboards. So uh, mm -hmm. to make it uh, more like sitar, 
you know, uh, the yep. upward bending, exactly. which makes uh, yep. down, down. so this type yeah, exactly. of uh, glis, glissandos, I, I love it. I love them so much. So that's, mm-hmm. that's another uh, design. Uh, my designs, uh, you know, are movable uh, frets along the fretboard. So different type of uh, designs of microtonal guitars. That's awesome. And, and, and the ingenuity of, of, of using Legos as well, which is awesome. I saw the Lego, um, microtonal guitar and I was just like, that's one of the beautiful things with Legos. And, and, and I have a five-year-old daughter. And I, I'm sitting at a Lego table. <laughs> this this table that I'm sitting at that I do my podcast on is her Lego table. Wow. And so you can lay out Legos and it's got these each side. I have I have I've got I've got Legos everywhere. Wow. Oh, man. Like, like, those, those like my house. Here. Yeah. But the, the the thing I love about Legos is the only limit to Legos is your imagination. You can build anything. And 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 so, you know, there was this this one story about these children. What was it? There was a story about a group of engineers that got together and they gave them a certain number of Legos and they said, build the tallest tower you can that doesn't fall down. And they were and this engineers, these engineers sat around for hours, you know, analyzing and, and drawing diagrams saying, well, you can do this. And then they built their their tower and then they brought in a bunch of kids and they gave them the same challenge, you know, <laughs> and the kids, the kids just were like they kept they kept building new designs, new design and seeing if it fell down. And finally, and you know who won? It was the kids. Wow. Because the kids were willing to try things. They just went at it and they said, you know, let's try and fail, try and fail. Whereas the adults sit there spending all their time planning. Yeah, that's just crazy. <laughs> yeah. But, but Beauty, talk to me about your Lego. What inspired you to make the Lego Michael Yeah, guitar? That's, that's my son, Atlas. Uh, when he was yeah. eight years old, uh, you know, Lego is a very big thing for our house and for Atlas. Uh, because, you know, when I was his age in Istanbul, uh, the Legos were so expensive. So, you know, yeah. it's always a big pain and burden burden for my uh, childhood. Because, you know, I keep, I keep saving my allowances yeah. and still, you know, yeah. get these uh, Star Wars... Uh, or no, I remember the moon landscape. I pay all yes, my. I I remember that one. Yeah, you know, <laughs> so moon expensive. landscape with yeah. the, you know uh, with some uh, you know with hills, and it was yeah. it was crazy. And you know, I paid um, for a huge amount of money for that landscape. Also, a little little you know moon like a moon uh, car or a moon truck, let's say. So it was crazy. Yeah. So uh, when. Atlas was born. Uh, I promised myself, I think, a bit subconsciously or maybe secretly, I don't know. Uh, I'm not <laughs> going to limit him anyway about Lego and books. Uh, yeah. And, you know, I paid a fortune. Like, yeah. I paid a big amount of money. But, uh, you know, I don't regret it because... It's worth it. Yeah, of course. It's, it's, worth, it's it. worth it. And, you know, uh, Atlas won a big prize with his Lego guitar uh, in uh, in the US uh, at Georgia Tech uh, in Atlanta. And, you know, they, they sent uh, uh, $1,000 to Atlas. Uh, anyway, and Atlas... Of course, went to the Lego store oh, more Lego. and gets <laughs> a huge Lego Technic Lamborghini. That's it. That's what I would do. So that's, you know, <laughs> he spends all his money again on Lego. So, you know, anyway, yeah. uh, coming back to the Lego microtonal guitar. So it was his, it was Atlas's idea uh, and he rebuilt my adjustable microtonal guitar fretboard, which has channels. Yeah. And mobile frets. He just uh, built it up uh, with Legos uh, and he puts it, uh, he installs it um, into the standard guitar and just uh, gave me the idea straight away. Uh, away. And then, you know, I at first I said, oh, no way. This, this has already been done. You know, we have uh, zillions of Lego guitars everywhere. Then, you know, but it, it was great. We didn't give up and we just uh, check out, look up uh, on YouTube. 
And then the light bulb, bulb comes to both of us because no. the fretboard with the Legos, you can see nowhere. Because yeah. no one has an issue about playing microtonal music, uh, movable frets, uh, or even, you know, teaching music theory uh, with the change of uh, Lego frets. No one, you know, uh, no one went into that trouble because it's a big, uh, uh, it's not that easy, of course, to design it. Anyway, then um, yeah. uh, we found our third partner, Rushan Jan Ajet. And uh, by using the 3D printing technology, uh, you know, we finished uh, the Lego microtonal guitar. Then it was a huge thing on uh, Facebook and on YouTube. So it gets uh, 1 million on YouTube. Uh, yeah. Then, you know, one of my favorite guitarists, Robert Fripp uh, of King, Cr King Crimson, he, nice. he even shared it on Facebook. So, you know, That's awesome. uh, that was, uh, and, you know, Guitar World, awesome. Guitar World magazine, Guitar magazine, uh, engineering sites like Interesting Engineering. So it, it went viral. Uh, then, and then we uh, become finalists at Georgia Tech. It, they they're organizing the biggest new instrument design uh, competition every year. Uh, I already won it uh, seven years ago in Atlanta uh, with my first design, adjustable guitar design. But after yeah. six years, so in 2020, we uh, you know applied again uh, with the Lego and we got the uh, first prize in People's Choice Awards. So everyone vote that's for awesome. us. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and then, yeah, so that's the story. And I still play the Lego guitar, so it has a huge potential. How, how, does, how is it to play? Is it straightforward to play? Is it challenging to play? You know, uh, the comments are, many comments are written like, oh, it's it must be so hard. What about your, you know, calluses on your fingers? And you know, <laughs> they don't, it, it's easy. They don't play guitar. It's easy. Yeah, they don't understand. It, you, 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 you get calluses just with a regular guitar. That's that's straightforward. Of course, you and know? you know, uh, it's like playing standard guitar. Uh, you know, Atlas plays it, no problem. Atlas is now uh, ten years old, and my students at the conservatory where we have middle school, so we mm -hmm. we get students when they are eleven, twelve. And you know yeah. they have no uh, difficulty, so it's okay. The only thing that awesome. you cannot do is bending. So bending uh, uh, is not possible because of the individual frets. But you know, uh, yeah. on the classical guitar, we don't bend, so it's not an yeah. issue for the classical guitars. Yeah, well, that's really interesting. Now, now I, I want to take it back. Then, like, how did you get started in music? How did you find music? Uh, when I was twelve. Uh, I would like to play guitar, but you know, no one, uh, no one is a musician in, in my family. So, uh, and no one uh, gave me the idea. Just you know, when I was twelve, I said, I want to play the guitar. Uh, that's, awesome. that's you know because of uh, I think the heavy metal bands that uh, I started uh, listening to in Istanbul during the early 90s. So uh, basically Iron Maiden, uh, Metallica oh, nice. and Guns N' Roses. Nice. Because you know, nice. <laughs> uh, the, the first big stadium concert in Istanbul was Metallica in 1993. And That's awesome. it was a big thing for my generation. So, you know, we, yeah. with a 10 or 15 uh, uh, friend group, we went to the concert, uh, you know, in the early morning. So it was awesome. Yeah. And then after Metallica, Guns N' Roses came. And, you know, it was the peak of Guns N' Roses. Yeah, the, yeah you, and that early, early yeah. mid-90s Guns N' Roses, man. That's, 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 yeah. that's peak Guns N' Roses. Yeah, you know? that's the, you know, uh, user Illusion 1 and 2, that period. Yep. And yep. The Metallica yep. Black Album period. Yeah, uh, and of course, never mind Nirvana. So that's you know yeah. a few months right. apart. So uh, I think that's that was my main motivation. So my main motivation was not to play the microtonal Turkish folk or traditional yeah. music. 
uh, because you know I was living in Istanbul, which was like 10 million people lived in er, early 90s, yeah. and now 20 million people live. So it's a you know huge metropolitan. Yeah, it's a metropolitan city with so many influences. Yeah, right? yeah, you know, I started with classical, then switched to electric, then switched back to classical and flamenco, and then switch back to no switch a uh, new uh, microtonal guitar designs and now uh, two months ago i have a new guitar electric microtonal guitar so now oh, really get back to electric world again with the microtonal uh, frets so uh, yeah you know i'm a, just a guitar nerd <laughs> well, that's it's a good thing to be, man. It's a good thing to be. Now, are are you designing everything yourself, or no, are no, you, no, 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 no? You know, uh, I'm not a luthier, so uh, I you're the luthier, okay. Uh, but you know, be, because uh, I'm an academic, uh, and mm -hmm. because this is my research area during my masters and PhD, I know all the yeah. designs really well. So uh, I know the right direction towards improving the history of microtonal guitars. So I, you know, I nice. see the flows. Uh, and so my first design uh, was the improvement in the history of mobile fretted guitars, because, you know, there were some, there were big inspirations for me. For example, mm -hmm. fr French luthier René Lacotte in 1840s uh, designed the first mobile fretted microtonal guitar. Really? Uh, and so I improved that uh, design in 2008 mm -hmm. by uh, opening up the channels and uh, inserting and removing the frets that you need. So, you know, uh, in that design, you cannot insert uh, or remove the frets. You can only move mm -hmm. in a limited way to correct the intonation of the guitar. Because, mm -hmm. you know, guitars uh, have these intonation problems because of the straight frets. So, yeah. in my opinion, uh, all the, uh, if you want in tune guitars, you need movable frets. So that's too obvious. Uh, yeah. Anyway, um, so, yeah, that, that's it. Uh, that's, that's why that's awesome. uh, yeah. I improve it. Then I collaborate with the engineer and luthier in Lego, uh, Ruchan, that I mentioned. And the, mm -hmm. now in the automatic microtonal guitar, I collaborated with a maker and engineer again, uh, Selçuk Keser. So it's always, you know, collaborations. That's awesome. Well, that's one of the best things. I think that people often forget that, like, you know, whether we, we, we get a vision, we get an idea. And yet so often to make that idea into a reality, to make it into something special, we need other people. We need people that can help us take a vision to a reality. And, and so whether that be a song that you have, you know, um, I love guitar, but I am not a great guitarist. And so when I do music and I, I, I do music for myself and my wife, um, I will always, you know, rely on my friend Fu because he is a, a, an absolute virtuoso guitar player. He's amazing. And, and, you know, sometimes it takes, it takes us having people that can fill out our skill sets, you know, like people that can help, help us branch out and become better, you know, which is awesome. Yeah. And now, uh, also now that I become, uh, 40, my age of forties, uh, yeah. I see that collaborating with my students, or uh, young people uh, who are in their 80, 20s. Yeah. It's amazing, different energy. They remind my, yeah. you know, uh, I still have a, a, you know, high potential energy, energy but you know, uh, <laughs> the age of 20s is something else. Uh, so yeah. it's amazing. Uh, if I want to create new things, uh, first, you know, I always go to my students and sometimes uh, some crazy things uh, comes up so uh, mm -hmm. yeah it's so nice to have these uh, collaborations we need that yeah and it also like like you're saying there you know when you work with these people we all of us kind of operate inside of our box our our 
our box of, of familiarity. It, and it's kind of what we know. It's the, you know, you're familiar with this, the way you do things and the style you do things. And when we approach other people, they can approach something from a way that is completely different to how we look at the world. And that's really awesome because, you know, there's always, there's so many ways to look at any problem or anything that we're approaching. And if we can, if we can um, get a new perspective, sometimes it, it allows us to broaden beyond where we're at. Like maybe if your son, son wasn't such a Lego fan, maybe you wouldn't think about, hey, maybe a Lego microtonal guitar. You know, you, you get this this inspiration from your son and, and from his love, you know? Exactly. Also, uh, in some ways, I make I find myself conservative. Like, you know, because yeah. of my habits, you know, yep. uh, I think that, you know, I, I should do this in this way the, that I yeah. used to. Uh, so uh, sometimes uh, I'm too strict. and uh, right. But sometimes uh, people try hard to show me the right way. And uh, <laughs> if I, you know, let it lose a bit more flexible, then I really say, oh, that's of course the better way. So why did yeah, I? Right. Why was I so right. stubborn about the old-fashioned way? So you know, yeah. I keep reminding myself we have to be more, you know, flexible, open. Because, but you know, yes. once it is your area, once it's your, you know, as you say, familiar area, uh, yeah. you know, there's a way. There's there's a pattern that you have been repeating. You know, so it's hard to be flexible sometimes. I agree. And you know, one of the things that you're, you're pointing out too is like in that, that is a huge thing culturally as well. You know, we all are in our respective cultures and, and we get into this, you know, this is what the way things are supposed to be. And, you know, I, I remember talking, I remember the first time my friend talked to me about a microtonal system and my mind was absolutely blown. And I, he's like, all right, now listen to this music. And, and I was just like, wow, that doesn't fit into my my box. And yet I was like so happy that my box had just been blasted wide open because suddenly I was like, wow, so there's a whole world that exists beyond our, and this is something that is, is, <laughs> I was talking to my wife about this the other day, right? And, and this is something that I, I love with science because something that is now familiar at one point in time was revolutionary. You know, and and so like, you know, even the idea of of, you know, space going to the moon, you tell us that to someone 300 years ago that we're going to go to the moon, you know, they might burn you at the stake, at least, you know, it's like they'd be like, this guy's a heretic, he's crazy, you know, and like, you know, but now. Hey, we went to the moon, you know, and now now we're talking about going to Mars and, you know, maybe there's aliens. Well, what if we find them? You know, it's these little things mm -hmm. that we see as as like we could never do that until someone does it. And then once someone does it, the whole world is like, oh, yeah, we, we, <laughs> we could have done that all along. You know, it's like like this. I love this. A, a simple phone. Right now. Um. In 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 the eighties, which we both it seems like we grew up. Yeah, I, I was born in seventy nine, so it's like when I when I was a kid, if I wanted all the stuff that was in this, I would have to carry around a camera. It was this big? A camcorder, uh, uh, you know, cassette player. Um, what else? All these things, you know, yeah. just to, to to have the same power. But then. Now we've got this little thing. And if you go back in time and told people about this, they'd be like, that's amazing. That's impossible. But we've got it, you know? Yeah. And so I love the idea of, of, of people who can take a look at something and go, yeah, man, let's try it. Yes. And also uh, I find uh, the future of music uh, because, you know, uh, music is my favorite art type. You know, uh, I yeah. cannot... I cannot live without music. So it's my, you know, you know, there is movies, uh, music, sculpture, painting, but you know, among those, music is my thing, like at yeah, the top for me. You. Without yeah. music, I cannot, you know, uh, survive. Anyway, yeah. so uh, I also see uh, in the last 
let's say in the last 10 or 20 years in the millennium like uh, the 12 tones the music keeps repeating keeps repeating uh, what yeah. what i mean is you know when you uh, think about for example bach beethoven mozart yeah. stravinsky schubert this is the classical side or yeah. uh, let's think about beatles pink floyd led zeppelin uh, yes king crimson the rock rock side or yeah. jazz miles davis duke ellington uh, you know all the others in on that side or even Uh, pop like Michael Jackson, Madonna, uh, you know the many people. When um, and of course '90s is something else, Nirvana and also yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know some other one. But what I'm trying to say is now whenever I listen to new music, new popular music or new classical music, it doesn't matter. I say, hmm, this is okay. This is cool. This is a little bit Led Zeppelin, a little bit mm -hmm. Miles Davis trumpets, and yep. a little bit contrapoint of Bach. So, you know, mm -hmm. um, it's imitations or, you know, uh, influences, uh, whatever. Uh, so what I'm trying to say is, I think there is maybe nothing left if you know all the history of music, with uh, including mm -hmm. popular Uh, classical whatever traditional so there's not no room left uh, for uh, new musicians uh, or uh, the musicians like us to create but when you have unlimited pitches in an octave mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. here we go maybe there's yeah. some pa pathway like out so and mm -hmm. you know uh, now I'm so happy with uh, for example there's an Australian rock band called King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizards. Uh, That's they, awesome. have three al <laughs> they have three albums uh, that we can uh, say that it's microtonal rock. That's awesome. And it's, you know, something brand new. Uh, yeah. So, um, so I believe this microtonality might also be a big thing for the future of music, but it's already a big thing now. So it's getting uh, bigger yeah. day after day. What? And one of the things too is like, um, I was talking to my wife about how things hit this, like, you know, we would say English, like a critical mass. Like you, you hit this certain point where it's, it's starting, 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 and you hit this point and then it just, you know, and one of the things too, that like, I've talked about this in my podcast before, like people would talk about what are the things destroying music throughout history. People would list like what's destroying music. And it was always like the new instrument. And they're like, in 1765, the thing destroying music, the violin, you know, the <laughs> piano. And they're like, because they were new at that time. And when these instruments were introduced, you know, when the saxophone first was introduced, people were like, it's such a horrible sound. It's just, you know, and, and those early people who started playing it, you know, from where they were at to like where like Kenny G was at, you know what I mean? Or, or, you know, one of the, any of the other great saxophone players, it was rudimentary, you know, at the beginning. And that, but yet it then evolved into this thing that could be absolutely, you know, manipulated into these amazing ways, but it took time. It took development and it took an openness of people to say, yeah, this, this has potential to be something that's really special. And yet they still were operating on that traditional music system. Whereas when we introduce these, these new, um, these new tones, it, there's so much to do. There's so much to the room to play. So much exactly. Room to play. Exactly. Which getting back to the Lego is what it's all about. People should be willing to play, to try new things, you know? Sure. To try you know, uh, new old things. <laughs> uh, yeah. When you have a Lego microtonal guitar, You can take off all your frets and you have a fretless, fretless guitar. So yeah. then you can insert any tones. You can play, you, if you want to play uh, pop uh, or Bach, you can do it with uh, inserting the uh, tones that you need. But then if you want to play Turkish music or Vietnamese music, you can change the locations and try for more tones Uh, that, that you are not used to. Uh, one of my nice. videos um, 
is being watched more than 12 million uh, on YouTube. That's and awesome. uh, there are more than 10,000 comments. And maybe half of the comments are like the like just you said, uh, you know, what is this? This is when, you know, a new yeah. instrument comes up. <laughs> so half of the comments are, this guitar is an out of tune guitar. It's bullshit. So, yeah. uh, but the other half is, oh, maybe we are not used to these tones. And after listening to, uh, you know, a few times, I love it. So, you know, half of it are... <laughs> Uh, criticizing also themselves uh, and then uh, you know very positive feedbacks but half of them are really lynching myself like you know yeah. it's so de demotivating <laughs> well, well one of the things too is like and I, I this is again coming back to the boxes that we're in um i remember when i first so i grew up in california and we eat lots of avocado we eat avocado and guacamole And so avocado in California is eaten as a savory, salty dish. You always add salt and, and seasoning of that sort to avocado. In Asia, specifically Vietnam, avocado is a sweet dish and they add it to sugar. And so they serve it as like a dessert. And I remember when I first came to Vietnam and someone was like, you want some avocado? I was like, yes, I do. I've been wanting some guacamole and someone handed me this avocado with sugar and sweetened milk in it. And I was like, what did you, what did you do to this? <laughs> Why? Why would you do that? You know, and because to me, with how I was brought up with avocado, it was a savory dish. And as I, I, I was suddenly thrown into the, the sweet category and I was like, this is not right. Everything in my soul says this is not right. But then that's actually not bad. You know, <laughs> a, a couple of times later, like, well, that's delicious. But it, in the beginning, it took this like this and it was simply it wasn't that I wasn't able to I simply wrote it off because it wasn't what I was used to. And I think that is the reaction that so many people will have is this is not what I know. I hate it. <laughs> did you yeah. take did you take the time to listen? And so you're right. Like people go at it a couple times. You know, the best example of this from Phil. The Big Lebowski, the Coen Brothers movie. So many people watch The Big Lebowski for the first time and they're like, what the hell is this, man? This is the weirdest movie. But then you, you, most of the people I know who watch The Big Lebowski didn't get it the first time. The first time they're just like, what is this? But then the second, third time, like, this is the best movie ever, man. I love this movie, you know? But it takes time because it's not what you're expecting. It's not No Country for Old Men. It's not like the other Coen Brothers movies, you know? It's it's a different vein. It's a different it's a different energy. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, We have to be open. Like, you know, yeah. I am also sometimes maybe I could be, I could react the same way, but I have to be open every time. Yeah. Now, let me ask you this question. Um, where do you go for inspiration now? Where do you go for inspiration in life and music now? What do you turn that, to? That's a good question. Uh, uh, I, it's for me easy to get inspired. So, you know, uh, I never have time like a depressed time. Uh, so, you know, uh, when I look at my life, I never uh, have lack of uh, inspiration. Uh, but from that. where, uh, <laughs> back to your question, biggest inspiration comes from novels. I'm a big novel fan. So uh, I have some favorite novelists. I Sometimes I read them twice, three times and I also of course I read all of their books for example uh, Haruki Murakami Japanese yeah. uh, author he, I read all of his books and now I'm rereading my I am now turning the second tour and uh, the Turkish novelist Orhan Pamuk okay. I read all of the, his you know all uh, Paulo Coelho Brazilian Yeah. yeah, so, uh, you know, 
uh, novels really uh, gives me a big inspiration. Uh, it has it it hasn't uh, got to be just music. It can uh, about life, but when it ki- inspires me about life, it's uh, I feel the you know uh, energy to create. Uh, so you know, I think about my projects. What am I doing in life? So you know, the novels give me this kind of energy towards yeah. uh, life, and I whenever love. I have the energy about. Uh, you know, loving life uh, because, uh, for example, I'm happy by learning and creating. So, you know, I now uh, I think I'm one year older than you. I was born in uh, 78. <laughs> uh, so, but, you know, we are at the same ages. And yeah. uh, now at the age of, you know, 43, I realize that uh, the life is simple for me. I love learning. I have a nice. big, you know, desire for learning. I enjoy learning. Uh, and, you know, I'm going to learn until I die. And, but only learning is not enough for me. I have to create and share it. Yes. So learn, create and share uh, is my motto, my life motto. Uh, so if I do these three I'm always inspired and happy, happy. I love that. And and that's the thing too. That's one of the reasons I created this podcast was because I wanted to share information with my daughter and I wanted other people to be able to share information so that we, to me, I think that we, we need to preserve knowledge. You know, imagine, imagine, I'm not saying that I'm Bach or Mozart or Beethoven, but (laughs) imagine if that we could have had them on video. You know, imagine if we could ask some of these questions to, to Bach. Bach, how, where do you go for your inspiration? How, how do you go? It, my God, you know, it's like, <laughs> how amazing would that be? You know, and, and, and it's, 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 it's so sad that we don't have that because ugh, the greatest gift that these people gave us was their inspiration. But if we could find out how they found their inspiration, it's so powerful because maybe we could channel some of that for ourselves and that can be spread around and our whole world could be a much more rich and beautiful place. Granted, the internet has a lot of weird stuff on it too, but I'm still not giving up on it because I still think that the great content is out there and outweighs the weird. <laughs> Though we all watch our cat cat videos are wonderful in their own weird way. <laughs> Uh, one more example uh, outside, uh, in addition to novels. Uh, yeah. oh, for example, uh, yesterday uh, when I was stuck in traffic, you know, the traffic in Istanbul is very famous. Uh, from my university uh, to my home, uh, I every day change continents. You know, Istanbul is divided yeah, yeah, yeah. into Europe yeah. and Asia. Europe, so Europe my Asia. Uh, university is in Europe and my uh, home is in Asia. Because, you know, in Asia, it's cheaper uh, to live and the nature is much better. In Europe, yeah. inside, in Istanbul, it's like more business and more cultural, lively place. Anyway, and uh, almost every day, every weekday, uh, I, uh, minimum, I have an hour, uh, you know, driving uh, period. Uh, and I enjoy it because... Yeah. I am I am listening to podcasts. Yep. Inclu- including yours. Thank you. And uh, and I am li- I'm watching and listening to yeah. YouTube videos. And yep. yesterday for 1 hour I watch uh, this great musician Jacob Collier's uh, yeah, microtonal yeah, yeah, microtonal approaches. And you nice. know it gives me crazy inspiration because you know He's uh, doing amazing uh, revolution uh, for classical Western music by having microtonal modulations and aesthetically amazing. So, you know, it's hard to say, ah, this is out of tune. You know, this is not good. He's doing amazing um, chord changes uh, inside this uh, classical Western music tradition with the microtonal microtones and you know it's 
gives me the inspiration. Oh, I'm also playing microtonal guitar, so I can do short videos like Jacob Collier explained on the guitar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, his crazy ideas, I can demonstrate it on the guitar because, you know, guitar is the most popular instrument in the world. So when people see what's going on on the guitar, they understand it more, much better than the voice, which is, yeah. you know, more like abstract. But on the guitar, you see the frets and you get the point. And one of the things that you, you share that I want to I wanna come back to yeah. um, is that the ability you're you're an educator and as am i i i i view anyone who really makes content at the end of the day you're an educator if you're putting videos on the internet i don't care if it's a, a cooking video or you talking to the camera you're teaching something you're always mm -hmm. teaching something maybe you're teaching how to be happy you're teaching people how to process stress if you're making a video with a bunch of cats well you're teaching people how to kind of take it easy in life you know Content is about education and we can educate people in really beautiful ways by doing some of these basic videos that just say, hey, Jacob Collier explained, you know, that's if you teach at your university, you get maybe what, 20 to 100 students, you know, and yeah, maybe. And so but if you teach a video on YouTube, you can get a million views. There's a million people who watch that. And the, the beauty of this access to to information is so powerful. And I feel like those people that are, are, are creators, like I, 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 I sat there today and I was, I was doing some work and I looked up at the sky and I was like, I will never retire in my life. I will never retire. I will work until my last day and my last breath. If I have the ability for one reason, because there will never be a day that I don't feel like I can contribute in some way. And I don't know what it is that I might be doing, but if there's something I can do, even if it's like, you know, if I have to go out and I'm, I'm giving away food to people that are, that need food, that's fine. It, whatever it is that I can do, if you can be helping, if you can be of service, if you can be teaching, do it, man. So. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Uh, you know, we all uh, we all uh, want to find meaning uh, to this short uh, sh to our short lives because you know yep. when you think about uh, Big Bang and when you think about the universe, right. uh, you know our lives are and it, yeah. it's over. Or maybe not not like this. Maybe one millionth of yeah yeah this, exactly our yeah. life. Is, so you know uh, that's why. Uh, with this knowledge, of course, you know, uh, every one of us finds, uh, tries to find a meaning. And uh, I totally agree with you. The meaning is, you know, share your knowledge, give positive energy, because, you know, yeah. the homo sapiens uh, is problematic. Like, you know, uh, the homo, homo, homo sapiens wa likes war. Homo sap yeah. sapiens is so selfish. Uh, yeah. So, you know, it's not... Uh, perfect, uh, you know, creatures. So it's, it, you know, it's a type we, of animal. Yeah. But we have created something beautiful in the art that we have begun to, to, to distribute and to, to, to share that, you know, and I, I try to talk to people about that. If you look at what separates humans from the apes, there's a couple of things. One, we have different levels of rational processing, but you know, you look at some of the, the, the gorilla that learned sign language, it had it as well. But the thing that we have that really separates us from the great apes is art, the arts, you know, mankind, those, those early humans that stood in caves and said, I'm going to paint this, the early tribes, you know, uh, uh, tribal people around the world that started trying to tell stories, trying to tell the cultures and memories through song, these were the beginnings of something so much greater for mankind. And we, we have the duty to kind of, to share that, to continue the beauty that is that, you know, exactly. there, there, there was the, the story of um, like the library of Alexandria, this, this place that was this ancient receptacle of knowledge that was lost. 
And, and mankind, I hope, will never have another point in time where all of our knowledge is in a space that could be lost, you know, because hopefully we can it, digitize it, you know, send it out to the know, stars if we have to. I, I don't, I don't trust uh, yeah, ourselves. Right. So, you know, <laughs> just, just think about the world wars, uh, first right. one and the second one. And now, you know, we are discussing, oh, Is Russia gonna attack Ukraine? And uh, yeah. then what would happen? Is will there be you know a you know world war if this happens? That happens. Now you know the possibilities keeps increasing. Yeah. Uh, maybe we don't see, but our our children yeah. <laughs> might see it. So uh, when you think about the possibility, uh, if you think about if you talk about the possibility, possibility, then it's very scary. Yeah. You know. Uh, so. We will see. Yeah. And, and, but again, coming back to that, like we were talking about, like, and I think that's one of the things that music does well is these things are scary, but if we can process them with our, our, our music, our film, our, our visit, um, the other medium of artistic expression and stories, maybe we can start processing some of it, maybe hopefully possibly head off some of those horrible outcomes, you know? I hope. Uh, I agree. Yes. Now, if you could go back in time to a younger version of yourself, what advice would you give yourself? Uh, the first thing that I would say, keep up the, <laughs> keep, keep up the good work. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, um, uh, because, you know, I was a hard, I've been hard workers. Like, yeah. you know, that's my motto. Uh, I believe that I I don't believe talent so much. Uh, I believe hard I'm work. With you. I'm with you. So, so that's why. Uh, and when I realized this, when I was 17, I realized this somehow. I don't know. I don't remember. Uh, so from 17 on, I just worked hard uh, toward what I love. Yeah. And and. I achieved what I love. Uh, so, uh, so after 17, I would say keep up the good work. <laughs> I love that. And before, if I go before 17, yeah, I will remind myself that you know, if you work hard, you can achieve whatever you want in this life. You, if you want to be rich, you can be rich. If you want to be worldwide known, worldwide known musician, you you can work hard and you can approach that uh, so but you know uh, just i'm happy with myself so uh, i would say keep up the good work <laughs> i love that i love that now if you had uh, aladdin's lamp the genie in the bottle what what would you wish for oh so you have so difficult questions for the finale <laughs> at the end at the end <laughs> yes that's crazy And so, should I? Do I have three wishes? Sure, you have three wishes. Because you know, Aladdin it's traditional. has it's traditional. Yeah, three wishes. Uh, let me see. Uh, you know, I'm not sure about this, but maybe the first wish could be uh, immortality. I love that. Uh, but you know, if I'm the only guy that would be immortal, that's a big problem. So the second wish would be immortality to everyone that I love and to all the good people of the world. And the third one is, I don't know. Uh, yeah, the, the first two is enough. Yeah. You know, one of the things like I talk about and I, I tend to think that you're the same because early on, you said that one of your biggest things is that you love to learn and you love to share it. Someone once asked me, like, do I, I want to live forever? And this my friend was like, no, there's no way. And I said, yes. And they're like, why? Are you scared of dying? I said, no. But I want to know everything. I want to yeah. know more. I want to understand it all. I want to know how deep this rabbit hole goes, you know? And it's like one of the challenges is in our lives, we only have 
to kind of try to figure it out. And some people did it better than others. You know, you look at, you know, the great science, you know, the Einsteins of the world. In this, they understood, they took a beautiful glimpse of what the universe is. But if imagine if we could have some of our great people that lived for, you know, thousand years. What, what amazing things we might be able to accomplish. But hopefully only the good people can live for a thousand years, not the bad ones. You know? <laughs> yeah. There so, are many bad people as well, you know, in the yeah. world. Well, brother, I, I appreciate this. This was a beautiful conversation.